Alright guys, so what you're going to do when you first open up RPG Maker MV is to click on New Project. I'm going to name this project Simple Clock. And then save it to wherever you'd like. And there we go. Now, what I'm going to first do is edit my tile set to make it outdoors so that I can get things like this. This is just where you're going to click to see what time it is. And I'm actually going to move it up here. Typically when I start a new game, I click the event maker, double click in the top left corner, set the trigger to parallel, click new event page, set self switch to A, and then double click contents, and I make a switch called game start. And then I turn that switch on. I double click here again to make sure you turn the event self switch onto itself so it goes to here and it stays there forever. This event can never be activated ever again and so what it basically does is turns on a switch and that's it. A switch that typically means your game has started. Then I go to OK. Make sure to save just in case. Now what I'm also going to do is double click and create an event here and then make sure your priority is set to same as characters trigger action button what you're gonna want to do is double click here go to control switches make a new switch that says display game clock hit OK OK and there you go display game clock and that's all that switch is basically going to do control S to save again just to make sure now what you're going to want to do is go to this uh, these cog wheels up here called database. Go to common events. Make sure you're under your first common event. And in the name, call it game start. And as you may have guessed, it is going to be a parallel trigger matched up with the game start control switch. Also go to common events 2. Go ahead and have your trigger set to parallel. Have the trigger or the switch be a display game clock and go ahead and repeat that in here go ahead click apply and while we're at it we're just gonna double click in here and control switches we're gonna go ahead and have a display game clock turn off so basically as soon as uh, the character clicks this or interacts with it it's gonna turn this on and then this t will turn itself back off so that it won't keep repeating itself so go to game start and what you're going to want to do is double click here go to page two click wait and go ahead and set duration to 60 frames which is one second of wait time now as soon as that has passed go ahead double click here go to the first page go to control variables and go ahead and click this one. What we're going to do is set up the minutes, the seconds, minutes, hours, and days. So the first one is going to be seconds. The second one is going to be minutes. The third one is going to be hours. And the fourth one is going to be days. And then go ahead and click seconds. You can either double click it or just hit OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to operation is going to be add a constant of one so after every 60 frames which is our sixth hour um, so after every 60 frames which is real life one second we're going to have the seconds go up by one and the seconds are going to start with zero so when the game first starts seconds will be zero and then after one second or 60 frames seconds are going to go up by one uh, so instead of doing this where seconds would go up by one then it would wait 60 we're not doing that all right so let's go ahead and test this how we're going to test this is go to where we have our display game clock go ahead and double click which will allow us to insert above where we double clicked and what we're going to do is insert show text now in this show text we're going to put the slash that is above your enter key capital V double brackets and then go ahead and um, 
put in a one. This is where we put our seconds variable. So it is variable. This will show us the variable of whatever number we have in here. And then you can go ahead and type in second. And what I like to do is type in second or seconds. Go ahead and hit preview if you want. It's going to show that. And it's showing us variable is starting with zero, which is nice. Go ahead, hit OK. OK, I'm going to save this. Hit play. And it shows us one second. We'll click it again, four seconds. And it should match up with real life. So if we wait 10 seconds, it should, sh it should show 10 seconds added on to what it showed before. All right, so now that we have that completed, we're going to go ahead and add how do we display minutes. So what we're going to do is double click below and go ahead and go to flow of control, control branch. What it's going to do is we're going to do make it a variable control branch and have seconds be greater than and in constant we're going to put 59. Hit OK and there you go. Now every second seconds will gain a value and now as soon as seconds is over 59 we're going to have go ahead and copy seconds paste it in here and click it once and hit spacebar to edit it or right click and edit and set seconds to zero we want to make sure after 59 seconds we reset seconds to zero or else it'll just keep going up and you'll never be able to come back to this control branch now under seconds double click or you don't have to double click you can click any one of these two control C to copy and then control V to paste and then click it I'll right click edit go ahead and have this set to minutes add one so now every time seconds is above 59 so as soon as seconds hit 60 we reset seconds to zero and then we increment minutes by one so as soon as seconds get to 58, 59, it will go to zero instead of 60. And then one minute has passed. And to test this, we're going to go ahead and go to display game clock. Click this, hit space to edit it. Go ahead and copy this with control C. Hit home on your keyboard, hit enter and control V to paste uh, minutes up here. So go ahead and change this to minutes. Or minute have this show variable too. click OK OK control save go ahead and play test your game new game now if we click here we should show minutes and seconds and it will keep updating over time now what we really want to do is test and make sure that as soon as seconds reaches 59 minutes starts incrementing by one and seconds gets reset so I'm gonna wait a little bit of time here and show you guys when it gets to that alright guys in about five more seconds minutes should increment and seconds should be reset and there we go so now it's been one minute in the game and five or six seconds so that is good go ahead and end game to title or just close this now what we have to do is add in hours and just like before, we're going to select this conditional branch, control C to copy it, and go ahead and paste it in here as well. Then click it, hit space, make sure we change seconds to minutes. And since there's 60 minutes in an hour, just like there are 60 seconds in a minute, all you have to do is change this to minutes, hit OK. Now what we have to do is reset minutes to zero. And increment not minutes but hours by one and then we can go to our display game clock go ahead and click this and edit it copy one of these move it right here double click to select all the words and then put in hours and it's going to show variable three because variable three is our hours counter now, instead of testing this, we're going to go ahead and go for days as well. So just select control C, click here inside the branch, make sure it's inside, not out control V to paste it, click the branch, 
hit spacebar, change minutes to hours. And now there aren't 59 or 60 hours in a day. So what we're going to do is do 23. Because the reason why we don't do 24 is because this counter counts zero as an actual number as well. So if you counted zero with this 24 as being individual entities, it would be 25 total different numbers. We want 23. And we reset hours to zero and we increment days now instead of hours. And there you go. So now the game is going to halt itself for about a second. After that second, it's going to tell us it's going to increment a second. Now, if there are 59 seconds and it increments, it goes above 59, thus going into this branch, which resets seconds to zero, increments minutes to one, and then repeats this, cell, re repeats this process until minutes are 59. As soon as it gets over 59, it then resets the minutes, increments the hours, and as soon as hours becomes greater than 23, resets the hours, increments the days. And we're going to go ahead and add days in here as well. Go ahead and change this to day and change this variable to four. Make sure it is four because our days counter is variable four. Go ahead and hit OK. Save your game. Play test your game. And let's find out. Yep, it displays them all correctly. And now we don't technically know if days and hours are working correctly. We know minutes is because we've tested it and been through a full minute. I'm not going to sit here and wait for an entire day, but what we can do and what most games have done is every second in a game isn't an actual second in real life. It's a little bit faster. So how to make this faster, if you wanted to, is whatever, however many times faster you want the game to run is what you have to divide this number by. So say I want the game to run 10 times faster. Well, 60 divided by 10, we get the calculator up. 60 over 10, that's six. So if we want the game to run 10 times faster, we have to edit these 60 frames to six frames. Does that make any sense? I hope it makes sense to you guys. So now the game will run 10 times faster because 60 divided by 10 is six. Now, if we wanted the game to run 60 times faster to really show progression really quickly, you would just edit this and make it one because 60 over 60 is one. And I believe you cannot do 0.5 in here. No, you cannot. So now the clock we made will run 60 times faster than real life. So if we click OK, OK, save it, and we test it, every minute should be a second for us. So if we go up here, Yes, every minute is about 60. Now, if we wanted to test the hours counter and the days counter, what you can do is go ahead and set their values already in this. So what I mean by that is go ahead and double click to insert above this switch because anything below it will not run. Go ahead and control variables. We're going to set minutes to... 55 and now that the game is running 60 times faster it's only going to take five seconds for minutes to roll over and hours to count so if we hit save play new game go ahead and click this we have 55 minutes 56 57 58 59 and now hours should count minutes back to zero now minutes can go to whatever it is again. And there we go. Now if we wanted to test days, we would just use the same process. So go ahead and copy and paste minutes. And instead of minutes, you put in, whoops, I'm sorry, hours. So instead of minutes, you put in hours. Go ahead, set hours to 23. Because as soon as it gets above 23, it will reset. Go ahead and click OK. Save. Play test, new game, click this, 56 and a half, if we wait a few seconds, 58 and a half, 
59. All right, so now when we click it again, one day, zero hours, two minutes, and three seconds. That's right, it's all correct, we have it. So yeah, that is how to make a simple in-game clock in RPG Maker MV. Hope you guys enjoyed.